Hey folks, Ray from DCGrammarco.com here. Take that bit of review of the Run Social Tread Tracker. Uh, now, Run Social is an online app for running, kind of like Zwift running, but not really. It's been around a while, um, but I actually don't care at all about that. Sorry. Uh, I'm actually more interested in this device itself called Tread Tracker. They make it, uh, it's a chunk of hardware that's underneath the treadmill that I'll show you in just a second that allows you to broadcast your treadmill speed and therefore distance over Bluetooth Smart. And what's cool about it is they went ahead and they basically made it completely standardized. So it's a Bluetooth Smart foot pod. It looks just like a Bluetooth Smart foot pod, exactly like the Stride foot pod I have down there. And also like the Zwift foot pod that I used to have there, but I can't find it at the moment. Um, the Zwift foot pod though is just a milestone foot pod rebranded. That's the $25 one. Uh, and most folks say that's it's mostly okay. Uh, I've got the, the newest rebranded version, which is the same as the old version, but now it has a little Zwift logo on it um, on the way. So let's check that out in a couple of weeks. But for now, I want to see if this is worth the cost or not. I bought it about a year ago, 119 bucks. Uh, and what I've got here is a bit of an interesting setup to validate whether or not this is accurate and more importantly, validate whether or not my treadmill is accurate. Um, now I don't actually have a ton of mileage on this treadmill. So it's about three or four years old, uh, but it's not super it's got only about 80 miles according to the diagnostic information in there i really rather run outside if i can so what i've done is a couple different things uh, number one is i've got here this mileage counter uh, so it's used for like measuring out running races and stuff like that there are more expensive ones called like the jones counter that you put in a bicycle and ride that around but this kind of fits the bill when this just has a little uh, simple counter there and it shows me how far it's gone uh, in order to remove any bounce i've taken a bungee cord and pressed it hard onto the treadmill itself it's not perfect, but I think it's really, really good. Uh, I've also got this one right here, a smaller version, the exact same thing that I've been doing tests on all morning long until I just fried it uh, and it no longer spins like it's stuck. So um, that was going really, really well up until it stopped going at all. Uh, and then the next thing I did is I went ahead and I painted markers on the treadmill itself. So, you know, this is all like using devices to validate the accuracy of the treadmill, but what if I simply use math? And so on here, you'll see I've got a marker for zero, uh, one, two, which is zero meters. And I measure this out with a tape measure uh, to one meter, and then again to two meters, and then again, which ended up being exactly back to zero again. Uh, so the entire length of the belt is three meters long. Uh, and then I can just use a counter. So I used a simple iPhone app to count as it went around Around. Uh, and then when it displayed a distance up here, I validated how many times it went around. I measured the, the difference between the point that started and stopped because getting the belt to stop at the exact same point is tricky. Subtracted all that and did a bunch of math. But before we get to all that math, let's talk about the device itself uh, because that's probably what you're here for. And then we'll talk about whether or not it's accurate or whether my treadmill is accurate. Uh, so the device itself sits below the treadmill. I'm gonna pull it out right here. It is super simple. It uses the mini USB uh, cable there to charge it, but it actually has batteries. So right now it is powered uh, without any batteries. So you could theoretically take this to the gym with you if you wanted to, uh, which is kind of interesting. Like if you thought about it, you know, a lot of people would think this would be like a multi-user sort of scenario, but in some cases it could be a multi-treadmill sort of scenario, in particular if you don't trust foot pods. Uh, so on the front, it's got a lock mechanism, so it allows me to go ahead and like this. Now it's like if I'm carrying a gym bag or something, it's locked. I press this button, unlocks. The reason this goes up and down is because it needs to kind of go up and down with the treadmill if there's incline, for example, and also to adjust the different heights of the treadmill itself. Uh, so the minimum height operating from the floor to the bottom of the uh, treadmill there is seven centimeters, and then it can go all the way up to 21 centimeters. In my case, I use it in the back because one, I can see the lights, and two, it works there. If I put it in the front, if I go all the way up on incline, it's actually too tall for this. So this be short there. Uh, so pretty straightforward. Uh, there's a power on off button and then there's a little blue light for whether or not it's broadcasting Bluetooth smart. Uh, and the power on and off is actually on the back there just to be clear on this. It's on and off. I switch it off. There we go. Switch it. There we go. Off and now it's off. Um, and then if I switch it back on again, now it's on. It also locks this little plate right here, uh, which is basically to keep the entire unit from like flipping over if you got a slight bit of sway in the belt itself. You simply put it down there and you're good to go. So we got it turned on, unlock, slide it under here, you can plug it in if you want to, leave it plugged in all the time. Uh, and that's 
That's all there is to it. So the next part then is pairing it up to your app. Uh, now for most of you, that'll probably be Zwift for running. Uh, so I've got Zwift here paired up. Uh, now what you do is you go into the run section like normal, and then you go click on the run to pair it. Uh, now you can see I've got a couple different devices here. I've got the tread tracker, which is down there. I've got the ticker run heart rate strap, which is up here. And I've got the stride, which is on my foot right there. Um, all these broadcasting is Bluetooth smart foot pods. What's really cool about the fact that they use a Bluetooth smart stand or not some proprietary sort of thing is I was also able to pair it up to the Garmin Phoenix 5 Plus over Bluetooth Smart. I could pair it to the uh, Polar Watch here over Bluetooth Smart, Assume to Watch over Bluetooth Smart, any other app that you want to over Bluetooth Smart. So it's not limited to just uh, Zwift or just Run Social's apps. So I'm gonna click on the uh, Tread Tracker right there, click OK. And at that point, I just go ahead and simply click OK and dive into Zwift like normal. So I'm gonna go for a bit of a run here, about 40 minutes or so. Okay, with the run all wrapped up, we're gonna talk about accuracy, uh, some pros and cons, and just kind of a whole bunch of stuff. So starting off with the device itself, uh, you know, from a build quality standpoint, I think it's really solid. Like I like the fact that, as I mentioned before on the bottom, this little piece rotates right there. Super, super clean. Uh, it locks down like this. You just push that button, as I mentioned earlier, uh, and then you can go ahead and also extend it out as well. I forgot to mention that earlier. So if you're treadmill even more height there, you can do that. Name again, everything locks. Super, super clean. The connectivity side uh, to Zwift and to the Garmin Fina 5 Plus that I tried out was spot on. It just worked. Like I have, I'm a huge fan of just works factor. This just worked. Um, you didn't have to use a run social app ever at all. I never even installed it until just tonight to go ahead. And uh, one thing you can do with it is to configure uh, the name of the device itself. So for example, if you had multiple treadmills and multiple tread trackers, you could go ahead and configure things such that each one was named individually. Therefore, you could find them and figure them out on Zwift or whatever apps you want to. So what about accuracy? Well, I did a bunch of tests. I did actually way too many tests. I did pretty much tests all day long on accuracy. Short stuff, long stuff, in between stuff. I did all sorts of stuff. So we're gonna start off with the 100 meter test. Now the 100 meters, because of the way I was trying to uh, count those lines, it became really difficult if you did like a thousand meters of that because the belt's going around, either the belt goes really, really slowly so you can count them and then you're sitting there forever, or the belt goes too fast and you can't count them. But 100 meters was a nice little chunk to start with. Uh, now right now, here are two of the 100 meter tests. Just to kind of walk you through those, what you'll see there is that the math distance, that's the one where I'm basically using uh, the counting of the line and doing all the math and measuring and everything to get the exact distance that belt traveled uh, is up top there so that's the reference effectively and then you have the tread tracker down below as well as the orange counter that big wheel that you saw there and the treadmill's distance itself um, now of course as you see immediately the treadmill really sucks at accuracy and it's only going to get more fun after this um, the orange wheel is impressively spot on i know like people look at that and be like oh it's not gonna it's gonna bounce and it did good, or more importantly, my bungee cord skills did good there. That thing was like super tight on that belt. It wasn't going anywhere. Um, in fact, when I did the yellow one that before I broke it, um, that was also really, really close. So good stuff there. And that becomes really visible in the one kilometer test that I did. So here's two more sets of data there um, where I went ahead and basically just ran it for exactly one kilometer. And I slowed down the treadmill uh, at the very end as I got close to one kilometer as per the tread tracker. Uh, and the reason I did that is because I wanted to basically measure the distance on this. And when you get to over one kilometer, most apps um, stop showing you the exact meters and just translate it to like 1.10 kilometers, 1.20 and so on. So be, anyways, it's just a data thing. Uh, so I got it to the point that the treadmill stopped um, exactly at 1.000 kilometers, all, all zeros across the board. Uh, so that's why you see that right there. Uh, and you see there that the tread tracker was the lowest of them. Um, so maybe a little bit of skip, maybe a little bit of, I don't know, it just was different, but it's not that much different. We're talking only a couple percent here, pretty darn close. Whereas the treadmill itself was upwards of five plus percent off. So now if we look at the data from the run you just saw, there's one little caveat I gotta make, is that as I finish up that very last interval, the tread tracker and Zwift lost connectivity between each other. I'm not really sure why, they just, it stopped talking to each other. 
Don't know why I troubleshooted, but they make the graph look kind of funky. So what I did to make things even across the board is I only took the data up until just before that point. So just a couple seconds before, I sliced off that and focused on the distance data for that while the data was still clean, as opposed to whatever Bluetooth smart thing was the issue here, whether it's Zwift or Tread Tracker, don't really know, but I didn't want it to impact the distance accuracy side of stuff. So looking at that, I then wore the Stride foot pod, this little doohickey right here. Uh, and in that case, you see it is 7,125 meters for Stride, 7,172 meters uh, for Tread Tracker, and the, tread form, the treadmill itself was at 7,319 meters. So the Tread Tracker and Stride are 0.65% apart, as in 0.65%, otherwise known as 99.35% the same, which is pretty darn impressive. I'm, I'm happy with that. Whereas the treadmill itself was 3% higher than that. And you may be saying to yourself, oh, that's not that much, what's 3%? 3% 3 is 195 extra meters on only 7K or so. So if you were running with your friends and did 7K, it's not even a 10K run, and you had to run an extra, basically 200 meters longer, you're probably unhappy about that. Um, but it even gets better. So if we look at the data itself, the distance is really at the higher paces. In fact, I could feel this while I was running. If you look at this graph right here, you'll see the treadmill's pace goes crazy high while the other two stay almost identical to each other. Uh, and as I was running, I noticed midway through each interval, the treadmill would surge. It was, it was quite a bit, in fact. It was almost a one kilometer an hour surge that it would do that the treadmill speed increased. I could audibly hear it. I could feel it in my legs. You notice when you're difference between like 15 kilometers an hour and 16 kilometers an hour, that's noticeable. These devices picked it up, uh, but the treadmill itself, the speed on the unit showed exactly the same until I would manually decrease it to try to compensate for it. Kind of a mess, that's, that's the treadmill. And that's unfortunately the reality of a lot of treadmills out there, uh, which is why you would use these sort of devices to get accurate data into things like Zwift or other apps that you have out there. So what are some of the accuracy takeaways? Well, I think this thing is actually pretty darn accurate. And I think the Stride uh, pod is also pretty darn accurate. And eventually I'll test and talk about the Zwift slash milestone pod. Uh, but this is impressive. As for my treadmill, no, it, it definitely sucks. Uh, and I've known this since sort of the very beginning that it sucked. I didn't think it sucked this badly. Um, I actually thought more of the suckage was on the technology side, not sort of the accuracy side. Uh, and in particular, it appears to suck the most when I run faster, um, which is unfortunate because I'm not getting credit for that. I'm getting too much either way. It's not, not ideal. Um, so then the question becomes, who buys this or why would you buy this? And I think it's for people that have a treadmill in their homes that may have multiple users on it. Uh, for a lot of people getting a foot whether it be a $200 stride or a $25 one from Zwift, makes more sense because they can take it outside, they can easily travel with it. I mean, this is basically the size of a shoe. So if you're traveling with this to a hotel on a business trip or a work trip or any sort of trip, uh, that's a lot compared to this is, is nothing. But there is definitely appeal to be able to just put this below the treadmill, have it always plugged in, always powered on, and just be done. You just jump on it, it connects to your, your Zwift session on Apple TV or iPad or whatever the heck it may be, and it just works no matter who's on there, whether it be yourself, your spouse, your friend, your, I don't know, just, it just works. And that's kind of cool. Anyways, if you found this interesting, whack that like button there at the bottom. I really appreciate it. It helps the channel quite a bit or subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. Have a good one. Oh wait, remember I mentioned at the very beginning of the video that I had a little surprise at the end about the whole audio thing. This is what you're about to see here. So normally I use a mic connected to uh, my phone. And I had done that for the entire intro of this video, but I forgot that I just simply slid it in my running shorts as opposed to putting it on something proper. Uh, and so I jumped on the treadmill and this happened. And that kids is why you practice safe phone casing.